Hey, hi, hi everyone. Uh, Satoshi here uh, from Government Technology Agency, uh, short for GovTech. Um, and I'm from the Gov Wallet and Gov Settle team. Very happy to be here today to share with you about two products that we have developed in at GovTech. Uh, I think it nicely ties in with the previous segment. Uh, on top of just sharing with you guys about these two products, I also would share with you guys a little bit about our journey. Uh, in digitalization for some manual processes that we have in the government sector. So, <clears throat> just curious, I'm not sure if you guys ever had any issues um, managing your payouts that you receive from the government or, or whatsoever, or organizations. Because personally, um, I have. So for example, I'll receive like a payout from organization A, maybe through checks, and then I receive another payout from organization B, maybe through paper vouchers. And sometimes a bit cumbersome to actually, um, it's a good problem to have, but it's also a little bit cumbersome to manage these payouts and how to expense them properly and keep track of them. So I think what GovAlert saw was to address a few gaps that we identified. Firstly, is to have a, a more unified approach on how citizens can receive and spend um, payouts from the Singapore government. Secondly, it's also to enable our organizations like government agencies to be able to easily manage and administer their disbursements through a centralized platform. And last is to allow citizens um, an easy way to expense whatever they receive flexibly and easily. So you might be thinking, hey, but you know, this is something that is probably going to be only be relevant for the gov Singapore government or citizens. Um, but at GovTech, we actually believe in using technology for public good. And so today, uh, while sharing about our journey, we are also sharing about um, opening this up to see if there are collaboration uh, opportunities with charities such as yourself, to see if you can leverage on some of the technologies that we are, have, can offer to support some of the use cases that you have. So at its core, Gov Wallet is really an API-first service. Uh, what that means is that we do not actually have any, as a product, we do not actually have a front-end interface, like a UI for you to use. But rather, it is a set of back-end services which can easily integrate with front-end user interfaces. And the reason why we really wanted it to be, or we really wanted to focus on just having a set of back-end API services is so that we can easily integrate and onboard and partner with our various front-end platforms, our banking partners, and also government agencies. Because we understand that everyone has a unique problem to solve. And so by being as agnostic and as flexible as possible, uh, that would lower a lot of the barrier of entries. And because there's also inflow and outflow of funds for Graph Wallet, so we adapted a double entry bookkeeping approach to ensure that the funds are easily trackable and reconcilable because reconciliation, as you understand, is a very tedious and manual process. Um, so what have we achieved so far? Uh, tying into the earlier segment about MVP, we have we embarked on this journey in like November 2021 and in two years we have integrated with about seven, um, seven different, oh sorry, six different front-end interfaces uh, ranging from LiveSG, SyncPass, which you may be a bit more familiar with, um, Healthy365, CrowdTaskSG, uh, WorkPal, which is a lot more relevant to internal um, government staff and also ATMs. And this would not have been possible if we didn't went with an API first uh, approach because that really allowed us to lower the barrier of entry and allow us to expedite a lot of the onboarding and um, integration issues that may have popped up. At the same time, GovFollow didn't want to create our own currency because what we wanted to do was tap on to existing products that's really available. So reuse. Um, what's already existingly there. 
Um, so in that sense, instead of creating our own currency, we leverage, we leverage on Nets and PayNow as our two payment channels. And this then allowed us to um, eliminate a lot of operations that the government agency previously had to perform in terms of managing or onboarding merchants, handle them, reconciling, reimbursements, and a lot, a lot, a lot of factors, a lot, a lot of issues that come around having to maintain your own set of merchants. By tapping on Nets and Pay Now, we essentially eliminate that and at the same time, tap on the network that uh, Nets and Pay Now has. So like on day one, you have like 200k merchants that your beneficiaries can spend at. Yeah, so there's just a screenshot of the volume of the network that uh, Pay Now and Nets have. Between the two of them, there's about 200k merchants on border on either one of them the last two rows and also similarly um this is like a little flex like uh in like two years we onboarded with on to um seven different agencies uh ranging from cpfb all the way to skills future i uh, just to illustrate a, a simple snapshot of how this actually works right um the funds we do not actually create intermediary accounts for every single beneficiary. What we do is all the funds resides in the agency's bank account or the organization's bank account. When a transaction is being made, when the user tries to make a payment and merchant, that is when it triggers a payment and transfers the funds from the agency bank account to the merchant's bank account. And because it is through an established payment channel that's already there, settlements are very smooth and either instantly for pay now or for nets is like plus one day so as a snapshot in two years we have uh, service about 1.2 million users with a total disbursement value of about 497 million across 15 schemes and across with seven agencies so the video that's playing right now on the on the screen is actually how uh, a user actually makes a payment at merchant with one of our integrations. So it's very similar to like your Grab Pay Wallet, uh, Fay Pay experience. It, it's intentional so that it lowers the barrier of entry for your beneficiaries as well. Yeah. At the same time, um, early on I mentioned that we have integrated ATMs. So I think early on in the early segment, there was also mentioned about how do we target the maybe digitally less savvy group of users. And so for one of our integrations with CPFB, where they were focused on giving out grants um, to replace checks, not sure if you've heard of this initiative called Gaf Check, Gaf, sorry, Gaf Cash, and uh, it allows their beneficiaries to withdraw monies through ATMs without a bank account number. So it's pretty cool. So we use like a, three-factor authentication kind of method where they key in their NRIC, uh, an access code given to them, and also facial recognition. And then the rest of the flow, it's very similar to your regular ATM flow where you select your account that you want to withdraw from and then the money just dispenses. So this is where the facial recognition kind of kicks in. It's a bit interesting. <laughs> um, it's a bit different from how you usually see. So we partnered up with um, the National Digital Identity Team, NDI, uh, to integrate with their facial recognition system. So after this, maybe I'll just skip forward in the interest of time. It's just where you select your um, account, uh, the scheme they want to withdraw from, and then withdraw your, your amount. So some of the key benefits that GovWallet really seeks to achieve, um, as I've mentioned much earlier in one of the slides above, is we really want to provide that facet of convenience to both the agencies uh, and the citizens, wherein for the agency is to be able to give, disperse their, their payouts easily, and for the citizens, for them to receive their monies easily. Um, at the same time, because we integrate with a multitude of different front-end interfaces, uh, we also allow agencies to send notifications to their, their beneficiaries 
um, so that they can gain saliency and at the same time remind their citizens will be reminded of whether th that they need to expand. So sometimes when you have physical vouchers, I'm not sure what happens to you, but for me, sometimes I kind of lose track of them. And then by the time I realize that I have them, it's expired. Yeah. And because we leverage on pay now and nets, um, there is pretty much no administrative overhead in terms of onboarding merchants or managing merchants for the agencies. So because that, that responsibility is then now handed over to pay now and nets. <clears throat> and then from a, from a beneficial point of view, they instantly get and gain access to a lot, a lot of merchants where they can spend their money set. And because pay now and nets has an existing uh, settlement flow that's established and the merchants are familiar with, there is no real need for agencies to have a separate reimbursement process. Um, we do notice that agencies used to have that when they had to uh, give, them, give out these payouts through checks and physical vouchers. And Gov Wallet has this. So we realized that along the way, we also realized that um, agencies, although they have the luxury of having a lot, a lot of merchants, at the same time, they still want that additional level of control in terms of like where they want to allow their, their beneficiaries to spend it or disallow them to spend it. And so Gov Wallet, we developed a merchant ring fencing feature where you can control that to a certain extent. At the same time, um, to provide even more convenience, uh, we developed a web portal where the administrators, uh, the agencies or organizations can then man administer their, or manage their schemes conveniently through a web portal. Yeah. So uh, the interesting thing is that when we first start off, we start off with just a few um, backend services. And as we progressed, right, in the spirit of that minimum viral product, um, incremental uh, development phase, um, we, we built based on the needs of the customers and not based on what we think are the needs of the customers. And in a nutshell, that's what Gaffol is about. So I'll just move on to the next product. Uh, Gov Settle. So if you think about Gov Wallet as a product there where we manage payouts, Gov Settle is a solution that allows you to manage inflow of funds or collect payments, payments in a sense. Um, while we were working on Gov Wallet, we realized that there is also a demand where organizations like to collect money, uh, payment, invoices, bills, debts, fines, fees, whatsoever. And then we realize that while they do that and while there are existing processes to do that, there is a, a very large gap in terms of reconciliation. Because at this moment, because of the convenience that the organizations want to provide their users, it causes a lot of, um, creates a lot of gaps because now the users can pay through many, many different disparate channels, can pay through checks, can pay through iBanking, can pay through credit card, can pay through pay now, can pay through gyro, can pay through nets. Um, and hence the agency staffs are always struggling to perform manual reconciliation across this fragmented set of channels. Um, at the same time, agencies struggle to do their reconciliation cleanly and and not just with the agencies but citizens at the same time um, will need to pay for different things through different methods uh, so for example maybe some of these bills you have to go to this kiosk some of your fees i need to pay through another website um, so it's a very all in all a very fragmented collection process for the agency and the citizen and Gov Settle um, tries to provide a consolidated approach um, to address some of these issues through two main mechanisms. Firstly, the uh, physical kiosk. Um, just to briefly 
encapsulate what's drawn out here is that we will first, the organization will provide Gauseto with the information of whatever they want to collect for. So in our case, let's say for example, an invoice, right? You will tell us like how much you want, who is supposed to pay. We will store the information. The payee would just need to go to a physical kiosk, um, retrieve all the outstanding invoices or payments that he needs to make, make that payment. And at the same time, the agencies would then be able to keep track of these payments uh, through the Agav Seto portal. Apart from physical kiosks, we also allow uh, payments to be made through a web portal. Um, Experience-wise, for the citizen, is, or the payee is about the same as the kiosk. Just apart from a kiosk, we do it through a web portal. Sorry. Okay. Yep. So, um, all in all, Gulf Settle looks to provide a centralized payment system uh, through online and a physical channel. So for charities that could potentially be a donation system or, or something along those lines, right? Um, we provide PayNow as a channel at this moment, but given our experience with GovWallet, we are expanding to other different payment channels like gyro, nets, credit cards. Um, we also allow partial or full payments so because we do understand that for some organizations they prefer their payments they allow the flexibility for their uh, payees to make partial payments and and not just enforce full payments um, so just to wrap up what gov settle is i would like to show you two key flows that we have the first one is how an admin actually or uh, the organization actually uploads or census the, the invoice details or the payment details. Just do a simple um, upload based on a template. And there's actually really nothing to show because there's just, it's, it's just so simple. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, couldn't really see much, but essentially the administrator just went in, uploaded a template, and then it just showed a success. I mean, of course, if let's say you fill it up wrongly, then there'll be errors and stuff like that. Um, then this is how the payee actually makes a payment uh, online. So at this moment, it's integrated through uh, PayNow. Login is through SyncPass, but that could be, it's agnostic. You could log in through any authentication mechanism. Your payee selects, will be able to retrieve all his outstanding invoices, selects which one he wants to pay, or selects the amount, and then once that's confirmed, we generate a dynamic QR, pay now QR code where the amount is uneditable at, that, at this juncture. Um, the payee then scans the QR code with his own uh, app, could even be got followed in this case, and then he makes the payment. And that is about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to circle back to what I said at the beginning, I think this session was really for us to share with you a little bit more about these two products, our journey uh, on how we digitalize some of the manual processes that we saw in the government agencies and at the same time open these two technologies out to organizations such as yourself. If there's a use case you would like to collaborate, you can reach out to myself. Um, my digital business card is in the QR or else satoshi underscore hayashi at tech.gov.sg. In any case, if you guys have any inquiries of any sort, you can just reach out to me. Um, I'm once again from GovTech, Gov Wallet and GovSettle team. Thank you so much for your time.